that green light. Give me that green light name. Give me that green light. Give me that green light name. Give me that green light. Give me that green light name. Give me that green light. Give me that green light name. Tonight's Green Light Maine is sponsored by Husson University. You and Husson, a powerful combination, a smart investment. Hello, we're back with a brand new episode of Green Light Maine, where two young companies go head to head for the opportunity to win $100,000 or more to grow our great state of Maine one dream at a time. I'm Don Gooding, your host tonight, and I hope you will join in. You can learn more at greenlightmain.com, share your thoughts and hopes in our online communities on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and work on your big idea for next season. Let's start by meeting our three highly capable judges. First, we have Jameson Webking, project manager for Zutility Tools. Uh, welcome to the show, Jameson. Thanks for having me, Don. And in the middle, we have Heather Sanborn, who is co-owner of Rising Tide Brewing Company. Great to have you, Heather. Nice to see you, Don. And finally, we have our sponsor of the evening. Dr. Bob Clark is president of Hassan University. Thanks for your support and hosting us here. Great to have you on campus. Well, I am excited about tonight's entrepreneurs, and we're going to get right to that. We have Jamin Badger, who is CEO of Stash Bomb. Take it away. I must ask you a question. Have you noticed all the facial hair that's been growing out there? Well, this is my product, Stash Bomb Stash Wax. I created this product out of necessity. I could not find my mustache wax at the drugstore, so I created my own. Uh, I come from an aviation background, and the logo is also aviation themed. This is homage, if you will, to pinup art from World War II on bombers. Um, my products vary by scent. This is the original scent here. It uh, is pine scented. This is the pine tree state after all. I make it in my kitchen right here in Maine. The other varieties I have are fresh cut grass, which is a baseball themed mustache wax. Also bacon, who doesn't like bacon? <laughs> and since fall is for facial hair, we have pumpkin spice and apple. Also, we have the beard line. We have a beard balm and a beard oil. Now, Beard balm and oil are for conditioning and shaping your beard. We also have a mustache comb. As you see, it's the perfect size for putting it in your pocket to, for grooming on the go. The latest product we have to the product line is the mustache mug. Now you might ask yourself, what's a mustache mug? It's a hand-thrown mug. And what makes it unique is this mustache guard that's built into it. So what you do is you put your beverage of choice in the mug, have a sip, and your mustache remains dry. So Stash Bomb has done over $100,000 worth of gross revenue in the past year, and it's just me and my wife putting in two or three hours of work every day. I think that we can take this company 10 times of that level and get to the next level with just a little support. So I'm looking for some funding to invest in professional website design, professional marketing services, and to hire a few people to help me along the way to expand to the next line, which is shaving products. We're looking to expand out into other men's grooming products, such as razors, badger hair brushes, shaving soap, and shaving cream. So with your help, we can achieve that. Thank you. OK, first question over to you, Jameson. Yeah, great presentation. I was just curious what the current distribution, distribution strategy is. Sure. Uh, right now, we're currently mostly just online only. Uh, we're sold through the major e-commerce websites, such as Amazon, eBay, and Etsy. And we do have a few stores, brick and mortar, that are in the greater Portland area. Heather, next question over to you. Can you talk about who the competitors are out there in the marketplace making these kinds of products and, and how your product is differentiated from those? Certainly. So the major player that's been in the mustache wax business for the longest time is, comes in a green tube. And it's been in, even in my grandfather's drawer at home. So I'm different in the sense that um, it's a tin. It's more easy to handle. The sense is a, it's a good variety versus just the same thing every day. And uh, it's modern. OK, Bob. Could you talk a little bit about your financial strategy for the product? 
Sure. So um, I started this business with $50, essentially. It was a trip to the craft store. So I discovered that it's a, as long as you have the right strategy, everything is forward moving from there. So I've been kind of tracking trends, and I believe that facial hair in general, as far as men's grooming, is up and coming. Be it shaving or growing a mustache back, uh, like in the old days. So we're just going to move forward as far as what's popular. Yeah, I get to ask a question. So of all of these products, which one or two is the one that seems to sell a lot? Or is it more broad? So the one that sells the most right now is the standard, the original Stash Bomb. And I pair that up with the mustache comb and package them and sell them as a package. And people love it. OK. Jameson, back to you. Uh, in terms of pricing, are you priced higher or lower in the market or competitively? Uh, competitively, I believe. Uh, my MSRP is $12, um, and most similar products go between $8 and $20. If they're high-end, they're on the $20 range. If they're stuff you'd find at the drugstore, it's closer to $8. OK. Heather, back to you. Can you talk about the ingredients in the product and where you're sourcing those from and, and how you're actually creating the product? Sure. So the whole product is made in my kitchen. Uh, there's a few basic ingredients, such as beeswax and uh, petrolatum, which is used commonly in many cosmetics. And I have uh, proprietary fragrance. Um, the source of the beeswax, I've been trying to get 100% main. It's becoming a little difficult because there's actually beeswax shortage out there. We all know that there's um, a bee shortage in general, but that translates down to the wax itself. So wherever I can get it, I'll get it from. OK, I think that will have to do it for questions and answers, although I'm sure you'd like to ask more. We're going to be back after a short break for a discussion with tonight's sponsor, President Bob Clark from Husson University here on Greenlight, Maine. At first, college seemed really intimidating. I wondered, would I make friends? Would I find things to do? I wanted to do more than just learn from a book. But I didn't have to worry, because I chose Hudson. We're standing by and ready for the call. I need you out on 202. We gotta get the hospital back online. In any weather, under any conditions, we're ready. When you lose power, there's one thing you can count on. We'll be ready to roll. Since 2006, we've offered free ATMs worldwide to our customers, saving them over $16 million. Bangor Savings Bank, you matter more. If any of you in our television audience has a big idea, we encourage you to visit greenlightmain.com for a list of resources and information about starting your own business. Welcome back to Greenlight, Maine, for a conversation with tonight's sponsor. We have Bob Clark, who is president of Husson University. So thanks for all that Husson is doing for Greenlight, Maine. We certainly find this as an extension of our business opportunities to provide professional learning. Yeah, so tell us more about that. Well, as an institution, it's the largest college of business in the state of Maine. Uh, our foundations were in business, and so promoting education for workplace uh, individuals is certainly our core mission. Yeah, and we've been able to use not only your Bangor, but, but also your uh, Westbrook facil facilities. So you're statewide, right? So as we have physical locations, both in Presque Isle, Westbrook, and here in Bangor, we also have online opportunities. So we work and partner across the entire state of Maine. Very interesting. Well, we've got a video now that says even more about Husson University, and we're going to go to that now. Hudson is a small private university that provides a, a high quality education to, to people from Maine and, and beyond as well. Hudson, I think, has a lot of things going for it. Number one is location. Where 
variety of programming, our small class size, the quality of the faculty and staff, and above all, the dedication of our student body. Providing students with an experiential learning opportunity right here on campus is the hallmark of a Husson education. They can learn in the classroom, out in the field for internships, or in a variety of places. They don't just learn theory, they learn how to apply it. The focus here is on preparing our students for professional lives. We want our students to walk out of Husson with a degree that allows them to begin work. Dustin is a very good school. All the opportunities it has and all the different things we could do in the school, like making friends, the teachers, the staff, everybody. It's like one big family, one big family, and the education is, is phenomenal. I love it a lot. Well, there's obviously a lot going on at Hassan University, and I understand that there are some new things coming out this fall as well. Certainly, as we work with the workplace and listen to employers about their needs for future employees, we find developing new programs and being able to execute on those is one of the things that we do exceptionally well. Mm. So this fall, we will be adding new programs in data analytics, mm -hmm. exercise science, biochemistry at the undergraduate level, and then at the graduate level, areas such as biotechnology in our MBA concentrations, risk management, and also a master's wow. in pharmacology. That's amazing. So although you're not necessarily a startup, you're definitely expanding into a lot of exciting areas. Well, we find keeping an entrepreneurial spirit alive at the university allows us to be in tune with what's needed and what's going on for workplace needs. Well, that's awesome to hear. Uh, we will be back for our second pitch of the evening after a short break here on Greenlight Maine. Furniture for Greenlight Maine is provided by Thomas Mosier Furniture, handmade American furniture since 1972. Hi, I'm Lori Lachance, president of Thomas College. Our graduate and undergraduate programs prepare you for success in your personal and professional life and for leadership and service in your community. I know firsthand the value of a Thomas degree. My Thomas MBA completely changed the trajectory of my career, giving me opportunities I would never have had without it. Thomas College provides a great education that is personal, relevant, affordable, and guaranteed. As a leader in Maine and New England in providing integrated accounting, consulting, and tax services to clients large and small, the team at MacPage has proven to provide innovative solutions to help us better meet our clients' needs. We enjoy the people we serve and care about the work we do. The success of our business is based upon our ability to develop quality relationships, one client at a time. MacPage. Accessible. Approachable. Accountable. Greenlight Maine would like to thank Maine Startup and Create Week, a conference worth skipping work for. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine. It's a good time to get hashtag Greenlight Maine ready because we are ready for our second pitch of the evening. With us is John Hansen from Switchdown. Take it away, John. Hello. My name is John Hansen and my company is Switchdown. Before I introduce you to my first product though, let me ask you a question. Do you have a light switch in your home that always seems to be in the wrong position? It'll be up when the light is off and down when the light is on? Or do you have a bunch of switches in a row and one of them always seems to be at odds with the rest? You'll go to turn them all off, but one of them will flip on instead. Our first product, the synchronized light switch, solves this problem. Imagine here that these switches are at opposite ends of a stairway or a hallway. You need a switch at each end to control the light so you don't have to walk through a dark room. These two top switches are like designs that you might have in your home today. So if I come in on one side and I flip on the light, this light is on, but you'll notice that the switch over there is still in the down position. Later, if I go through the door over there and I want to turn the light off, I have to flip the switch up to do so. And now both switches are up when the light is off. On the bottom is our new synchronized design. If I come in on this door over here and I flip this switch up, that one there pops up automatically to match. Later, if I go through that door and I want to turn the light off, I flip this one down and that one pops down automatically to match. In this way, up is always on and down is always off, just like it should be. This is a three-way light switch. 
So switches that are controlled um, remotely, voice activated with a smartphone or through the internet in a smart home application. The, this, this technology blends well with those products because they need to be controlled remotely. But this gives the convenient, familiar interface that customers are used to. We were very grateful to get a, an MTI Tech Start grant that helped us in the patent process. And we have patent pending designs in both the classic toggle style as well as the contemporary flat decora style. And we're eager to bring these smart, easy to use light switches to customers everywhere. OK, very interesting. Heather, first question over to you. Yeah, can you talk about who your target market is? Are you looking to sell these to builders or to homeowners who are doing their own renovations? Great question, thank you. I think uh, electricians are ultimately where most of the purchases are going to come from. But they're going to be needed to be generated through the customers, whoever they're, they're uh, building for. And so we need, to, we need to build the demand with the customers, the end users, the homeowners, so that they pull through the electricians. So we need to make sure that these are in, in both the electrical supply houses where electricians buy them, but also in places where the end customer will see them. Interesting. Bob? Could you talk about the financial model that you're working on for your business? Sure. Um, Price-wise, we, we plan to, to uh, uh, position these like a... a um, a dimmer switch, which is typically in the high $20 range. And what it does is it offers functionality with a little bit of differentiation. And that's what this is. And we plan to position ourselves in a similar uh, way. OK, Jamison, over to you. Yeah, I'm curious what you'd use the $200,000 for. Sure. So there's a couple uh, hurdles right up front that we would, that we would need that for. Uh, one of those would be UL licensing, which can be a costly uh, venture. Um, no store is going to sell an electrical product without the UL licensing. And so that's one of the first things. And then an another thing would be the plastic injection molding. There'll be a, a, a large upfront cost in getting, in getting tooling for these. These uh, products here were done with 3D printing, and so we need to, to get to the plastic injection molding stage. OK, Heather, I think there's time for another question. So when you said these were going to be in places where homeowners would see them, are you looking at sort of big box renovation stores as a potential outlet? I think that would be one of the spots, social media another. And I'd just like to mention as well that uh, Cooper Industries was in Maine, uh, in Brunswick, manufacturing, and shut down a few years ago. And, and sadly so, they put about 100 people out of work. In Maine, this is the perfect place for this product because we have people in Maine with the expertise who've done this kind of thing before. And so that's one of my asks is that I'd love to hear from people who, who have experience here in Maine, especially people who worked at Cooper. I'd love to hear from them. Interesting. Bob, maybe final question? So that's a way to use the Maine advantage to your product's outcome? Absolutely. We believe that, that Maine is the perfect place to do this because we have the expertise, we have the design, we're ready to go. One quick question. Uh, at the prices uh, you mentioned, what are going to be the profit margins of your business once you scale up? Yeah, we, we feel pretty confident. Uh, we're, we're looking at about a 50% margins, so, so comfortable margins on the product. OK, great. I think that's going to wrap up our questions for now. Uh, we're going to be back after a short break for judge deliberations about these two very interesting companies here on Greenlight May. Broadcast facilities provided by Nescom, the New England School of Communications at Husson University. I think people walk into our store because they know we're going to treat them well and they know they're going to get a good value for whatever they're looking at. It's definitely something that you, you don't see at large corporate chains that have lost that real personal touch that we try to keep up with every day. At Days, we constantly show that we care. They know that we're going to take care of them for years to come. It's not a one sale and done. We want to build customers for a lifetime. Make sure that my jewelry comes from Days. Hi, I'm Lori Lachance, president of Thomas College. Our graduate and undergraduate programs prepare you for success in your personal and professional life and for leadership and service in your community. I know firsthand the value of a Thomas degree. My Thomas MBA completely changed the trajectory of my career, giving me opportunities I would never have had without it. Thomas College provides a great education that is personal, relevant, affordable, and guaranteed. Fame is one of the great resources in our state 
to enable businesses to find financing. Fain helps Maine businesses create and retain quality jobs. Every person that we've dealt with at Fame has been helpful and has been, for us, a partner. The whole idea is to find the right tool for the right job. Fame is the right tool because it's flexible and they're there when you need them. From business startup through maturity, Fame works to get you to yes. Thank you, Fame. Thank you, Fame. Thank you, Fame. Please visit GreenlightMaine.com to follow the progress of your favorite entrepreneurs and find information and resources about becoming an entrepreneur yourself. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine. It's a good time to share your thoughts on tonight's competitors on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as we talk with our judges about their thoughts about tonight's companies. So Jameson, I'd like to talk with you about what you see as their strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, uh, I really like the new technology behind Switchdown. Mm. Uh, I'm concerned with Stash Bomb and being in the fashion industry and whether it's a fad or a trend. Interesting. Heather, some of your thoughts about these two companies. I, I think that uh, Stash Bomb has some really nice branding, or at least very striking branding, very, very memorable yeah. Yeah. branding. Yep. Um, I'm a little worried about their um, sort of lack of focus and their, their interest in going into a lot of different areas that don't really play on that branding that's about mustaches. And, yeah, and, that's right. And so their, their primary product might be associated with that logo, but maybe the other ones um, might struggle to find that association. So I think there's some question of refining the, the focus and, and where are you really going and and maybe that's not the right logo uh, to go with if, Over time. if the yeah. brand is bigger than that mm -hmm. um, or wants to have more of a main focus. On Switchdown, I, I, I like the technology. Um, it, it's, it's not a product that I see filling an enormous need, but I think those folks out there who are building a new sort of renovated place that they might be putting these three-way switches in anyway, it's not a huge cost to upgrade. So maybe there is a, a niche to be filled there. Interesting. Bob, some of your thoughts. Well, I think uh, looking at Stash Bomb, the question about the market size, the future opportunities that exist, uh, the notion of growing from a kitchen-based industry to a full enterprise, if you will, what are the limitations that it would extend there? Mm. And then when we get to uh, the innovation in switch down in terms of their technology, uh, getting through the licensing, how much challenge that'll represent for the business, but it does seem to be a product that would be developed and enhance the economy. Interesting. So uh, financing is an issue that came up uh, a couple times. I know, uh, Jameson, your company has done uh, some Kickstarter campaigns. Do you see that being viable for either of these companies? Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I, I do think both Stash Bomb and Switchdown could have a successful Kickstarter campaigns and that their products are right for that type of market. Um, Kickstarter and, and crowdfunding seems to be more consumer focused, and so I think uh, maybe more lean towards Stash Bomb for that avenue. But that said, I, I do I do think that switch down um, for especially for the new homeowners, and because it's so price uh, price competitive with the dimmer switches that I know my dad's put them in every house that we've ever had. Yeah, so it um, I, I see avenues for both of them. Yeah, I don't know how many people are OCD like me and my wife, but I know when uh, I heard about this, it's like, yes, I want one of these. <laughs> so, uh, Heather, some additional thoughts about some of the challenges these folks are going to be facing. You've had to scale your business. Yeah. What about the scaling challenges? Yeah, I think that the big um, challenge for both of these folks is going to be finding those retailers who are going to carry the products, mm. um, whether it be the, you know, the electrical supply house that's selling things to electricians, the Home Depot, um, Lowe's, whatever, or whether it's just the uh, the barber shops, the high end sort of male grooming uh, focused retailers um, that this product probably really needs to be in, um, or going into the drugstore. He said his initial concern was that he couldn't get these mustache bombs in a drugstore. Um, so can he get these ones into a drugstore so that he's solving that problem for that future consumer? Interesting. So we're going to go down the line this way. Bob, some final thoughts in terms of 
things these companies need to focus on in the next six to 12 months? Well, as they look at their distribution and the expansion opportunities, the product development, finalizing it, that initiative, and I think both of them looking at how do they get their brand out into the marketplace to extend the share of market that they might have available. Okay, Heather, some final thoughts? Yeah, I think they've got two different challenges. Switchdown's got a challenge to really um, create a marketable product um, by going through the UL process and, and actually tooling up yep. for it. And final thoughts, Jameson? Dashbomb uh, really building out a robust website. Okay, well thank you very much for your thoughts on these companies. We're going to be back after a short break and find out which of these companies will advance here on Greenlight Maine. Greenlight Maine would like to thank the Maine Department of Economic and Community Development, the Maine DECD, helping businesses and communities prosper. In 1972, Tom Moser committed his life's work to craft and four decades later employs 70 fine craftsmen and women in our shop in Auburn, Maine. With showrooms and customers from coast to coast and numerous awards and accolades, Tom has firmly established himself as an entrepreneurial tour de force and has proven that a life doing what you love is indeed possible. This year's winner of Greenlight Maine will win this handmade Thomas Mosier Beacon Box and $100,000. Since 2006, we've offered free ATMs worldwide to our customers, saving them over $16 million. Bangor Savings Bank, you matter more. At first, college seemed really intimidating. I wondered, would I make friends? Would I find things to do? I wanted to do more than just learn from a book. But I didn't have to worry because I chose Hassan. Please join us to find vital information on our website at greenlightmain.com and be a part of our vibrant community on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Together, we're building Maine's future, one dream at a time. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine. You've heard two interesting pitches and judges deliberating, and now it's time, it's that moment in the show where we find out which company is going to get the advance from the judges tonight. That means Switchdown is going to advance to the finals, where 13 companies will be competing for a chance to win at least $100,000 in cash. And whether or not you at home agreed with the judges, you can go to greenlightmain.com and vote for your favorite entrepreneur. We'll be back next week with two more exciting entrepreneurs here on Greenlight Maine. We'll see you then. Greenlight Maine has been brought to you by Husson University, you and Husson, a powerful combination, a smart investment. Greenlight Maine would not be possible without the support of all of our corporate sponsors. Thank you. Give me that green light. Give me that green light, Maine. Give me that green light. Give me that green light, Maine. Greenlight Maine has been a paid-for presentation by the Portland Media Group. <laughs>